Good morning, boys and girls. Mrs. Hindhorst here, and I found a very cool nonfiction book for us to read together. It's called Poison Dart Frogs Up Close. Close. And it's by an author named Carmen Bredesen. Um, I was looking at the front and the back cover. The back cover is really cool as well because um, it tells us a little bit about what we'll find out in this book. So it says, the Zoom In on Animals series, so there's more than one book in this series, um, takes you on a trip into the wild. Look at many different animals up close and find out what makes each one special. So in this book, we'll be learning about poison dart frogs, but if you were to go find other books by Carmen Bredesen in the Zoom In on Animals series, you could find books about tarantulas, about giraffes, lions, kangaroos. So I thought that was really cool. Um, a big part of the reason that I chose this book to read is that it is nonfiction, and we haven't done that in a few days. And also, the author did something really cool in this book. The way that um, they laid out their book, the way that they organized the information, is exactly what we did in our nonfiction pieces that we wrote. Um, and I'll get a little bit more in depth with that as we read. But there are lots of cool nonfiction text features in here that I'll point out along the way as well. So, Poison Dart Frogs Up Close by Carmen Bredesen. We see different parts of these poison dart frogs on the front cover. Ooh, look at that pretty, it's not an illustration, look at that pretty photograph. One thing I do know about poison dart frogs is that they are beautiful, they have bright colored skin, but they're also <laughs> kind of dangerous. Okay, so we've got a table of contents right here, which is another text feature. Remember that a table of contents tells you the headings um, and what pages you can find those headings and that information on. So for example, I should find the heading frog legs on page 12, and I should expect pages 12 and probably 13, because it's not on here, to be all about frog legs. Um, or poison dart frog legs. So let's check that real quick. Page 12. 8, 10, 12. And there it is. There's our heading, frog legs. And these two pages. There's a photograph on this next page, but these two pages are all about frog legs. So, table of contents right here. And this is really cool. This, instead of calling it a glossary, which we would usually find in the back of the book, um, is called Words to Know, and the author put it at the front of the book to kind of tell us what we need to know before we start reading. So it has the word poison, which is something that can hurt or kill an animal or, po or a person. It also shows us how to pronounce it, poison. Slime, thick, soft, slippery matter. Tadpoles or baby frogs, they look like fish. And vocal sac or it's the skin on the throat that can blow up like a balloon. So I'm excited to see a picture of that in this book. So these are all the tricky words that we might not know what they mean, but the author went ahead and gave this to the gave us gave those to us at the beginning of the book. This is another nonfiction text feature. Think in your head, what might this be called? It shows the parts of a whole starts with a D. It's a diagram. Remember, diagrams show parts of a hole. These are parts of a poison dart frog. So you've got the leg, toes, mouth, the eye, there's one on the other side over here, and the head. Frog homes, that's our first heading. So, poison dart frogs like warm, wet places. Some live in high trees in the rainforest. Others live near streams or rivers. These frogs are not very big, and some are as small as your thumbnail. That's tiny. So here's a picture of that first poison dart frog. And over here, we've got another text feature called a map. Remember, we live, we talked about this in our last video, or a couple videos ago, North America, South America. So, 
poison dart frogs live in these shaded areas of South and Central America. They live on a different continent than we do, so we wouldn't find poison dart frogs where we live. Um, so here is our caption, and here is our map. Frog skin up close. The skin of most poison dart frogs is bright and colorful. Some frogs are red or purple. Others are yellow, blue, or green. The bright skin warns enemies to stay away. Here's a photograph of some of those. Aren't they cool looking? That was another reason I chose this book. Poison dart frogs are really pretty. But I don't actually know why they're dangerous, so I'm excited to read with you guys and find out. Frog poison. Oh, and we have a caption. It says ruby poison dart frog. That's what this kind is called. The slime on the frog's skin is a poison. People in the rainforest dip their darts into the slime. Then they use the poison darts to kill animals for food. This is how the frogs get their name. Oh, I didn't know that. So this caption over here says, the golden poison dart frog is the most poisonous of all poison dart frogs. And that's what it looks like. So people who hunt in the rainforests have darts or kind of like arrows and they will, what does it say? They will dip their darts into the slime. So that little um, slimy matter that frogs leave behind and it will kill animals. I wonder if it's poisonous to humans. I should look that up later. The frog vocal sac. Haha, <laughs> there's that bubble. A male poison dart frog pushes air into his vocal sac. The sac blows up like a balloon, and when the air comes out, the sound is very loud. The call of a dart frog sounds like a buzz or a chirp. So, this caption says, Phantasmal phantasmal poison dart frog. So that's what this one's called, a phantasmal poison dart frog. You know, humans don't have vocal sacs, but we have vocal cords right in the same spot that this sac popped up. Um, vocal cords are what help us make noises and to actually talk. So here is another poison dart frog with its vocal sac blown out. Frog legs up close. A frog's back legs are longer than its front legs. The back legs fold up when the frog is sitting. They shoot straight out when the frog jumps. Poison dart frogs do not jump very far. So this caption says green and black poison dart frog. That's what this kind of dart frog is. And then down here, there is a caption for the picture over here. And this next frog is going to be called an Amazonian poison dart frog. See how its long legs are, or its back legs are longer and its front legs are not. I assume that helps it jump far. Because if you've got long legs, you can get um, places quicker. Frog toes. Poison dart frogs crawl around on the forest floor. Sometimes they climb into the trees. The bottoms of their toes are sticky, and the sticky toes help the frogs from falling. So kind of like Spider-Man. So this caption says, dying black poison dart frog. So this one's called a dying black poison dart frog. But not like dying like passed away dying, dying like you can color something dying. Like you um, tie dye a shirt. Um, this next caption is for the photo over here and it says the Rio Made Madero poison dart frog. So Rio Madero. That's a pretty one. Frog eggs. A female poison dart frog lays five to 40 eggs at a time. She lays the eggs in a little puddle of water. 
mother and father frogs stay near the eggs. In about two weeks, tiny tadpoles break out of the eggs. So here are these little eggs that the mama frog lays in little ponds, or sorry, little puddles of water. And then this caption down here says, a phantasmal poison dart frog with eggs. So there's a mama frog with her eggs. Doesn't look like she laid it in a puddle here though. She looks like she laid it on a leaf, so that's interesting. Frog tadpoles up close. I don't know if you've ever touched one. I have, they're pretty slimy, but they're cool. One of the parents backs up to the babies. The tadpoles wiggle onto their parents' backs, and then the frog takes its babies to a pool of water. The tadpoles swim away. So over here, we're gonna have a red poison dart frog, and the little baby tadpoles wiggled up onto its parents' back. That kind of makes me sad that they're just gonna swim away. Like, are the mama and dad frogs gonna stay with them, or are they on their own? Little frog up close. In a few weeks, the tadpole's tail starts to get smaller. Then it grows little legs and feet. The tadpole starts to look like a frog. The tiny frog leaves the water. It hops into the rainforest. So it's growing these little legs and its tail will get smaller. And so our caption down here says, blue poison dart frogs. That's such a pretty blue. And that's the end of that um, information style. But at the back, it gives us a life cycle, which is kind of um, another diagram. It's showing us parts of a whole life cycle. So at the beginning of a frog's life cycle, um, eggs are laid in water. Remember, small pond, or darn it, small puddle. Um, so maybe that was uh, what the last picture I was confused about was um, there was just a little bit of a puddle on a leaf that the frog laid their eggs in. So eggs and then tiny tadpoles hatch in about two weeks and then tadpoles turn into little frogs in one to two months and then adult frogs have brightly colored skin that's a little fun fact for us and those adults go ahead and have babies and those babies turn into tadpoles and those tadpoles grow into frogs and it's just a cycle it keeps going on and on. And then the author did something really cool and it's they basically told us if you want to learn more you can look up these books or go to these websites. So I'll have to share those with you guys um, on our remind page so that you guys can look up more about frogs and poison dart frogs. Oh and at the back we have an index and remember, the index is where um, some key words, some important words from the text might pop up. But if we don't want to read through the whole book and look for them, we can just come back here and be like, mm, oh, I want to learn about the rainforest with tadpoles. So I can go to page 4, page 8, or page 20 and find that word. Yep, rainforest is right there. So... That was a cool book. I learned a lot about poison dart frogs, but I bet I could learn even more. And in another video, I'll go ahead and talk about how this author laid out their writing um, in a way that can show me how to lay out my own informational writing. So thank you for listening.